All right, y'all. We are live on this beautiful Thursday. It's a beautiful Thursday, guys. The sun is crowing. The roosters are shining. It's a beautiful day. While we wait for some people to get in here, guys, I want to talk about this scripture that has been really on my heart as of late. I'm sure if any of you believes in Jesus the Messiah, you are very familiar with this. And if you don't believe, then I still think you can get some good application from this wisdom right here. Basically, when God created man to be upon the earth, he gave them a very specific decree of what they should do. Essentially, they were going to be God's representations upon the earth. Just as God was in heaven, we were going to represent him on the earth. When he created man, he said to them, Poru or vu umilua ta'aretz v'chiv shuha, which means be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and rule over it, subdue the earth. We are supposed to take care of the earth. We are supposed to uh, live our lives in a way that represents our Creator. And man is in a fallen state. And a lot of times when we hear the good news of the kingdom of God, that Jesus the Messiah has come to earth, He's died for our sins so we can be redeemed, put back into our original state where we are in God's image. Actually, we are God's representations in every possible way. We can lose sight of that mission that we have because we get caught up in the things of this world that are not necessarily even bad. And when Jesus gives this parable of the wheat and the tares, he says some people, they hear the news of the kingdom of God and they receive it with joy. But then the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke out the word and they make it unfruitful. And what that means is, especially for me, as I spend so much time looking at the charts, making trades, I lose sight of my true mission that God's given me, which is to be a father, to raise up godly children, to be a husband, to love my wife and lay down my life for her, um, and to actually do things that have an eternal, meaningful purpose. And it's so easy for me to get distracted by the things that I do in my everyday life. And so I have to check myself and repent on a regular basis to get myself back oriented looking at the Messiah and understanding my true purpose is not to trade and make money. I'm doing these things so that I can live out the mission that God gave me, to be a representation of Him upon the earth, to raise my children in a godly way, to love my wife, to be a part of my community, religious and secular. All right, guys, with that said, we are going to get into some stuff here, my Ethereum scalping strategy, because we've been killing it, guys. We have been killing it lately. <laughs> Ethereum is on fire right now, guys. Ethereum is absolutely on fire. Okay, so let, let's get into this here, guys. Let's get into this. All right. Here I am, guys. Got no shirt on. I was working out squats, deadlifts, farmer's walks while I was trading. I don't even have my official Jason Casper uniform on, guys. There we go. All right. I'm in this epic Ethereum long right now. It is up uh, over 126% right there. Um I want my my glasses are fogging up because I'm so sweaty, guys. I'm I'm moist if you can't tell. My hair's a mess. <sighs> Alright, let's get into it, guys. Let's get into this. I want to talk about today what has been happening since yesterday because um Ethereum has been doing some crazy price action. So let's start with the long trade that I took yesterday morning. So yesterday morning in the Discord when I was posting my regular TA. Um, what, what did I do? Where was that? Where was that? Oh, right here. So I opened a long, I opened a breakout long for Ethereum at, uh, $2,555. The reason I opened up the long down there at, uh, right around here, guys, at, um, 2555, right around here is because we were about to break out of a resistance. And a lot of you guys know I'm not usually a breakout trader. This was the long entry I took right up here as we broke above these resistances. I'm not usually a breakout trader, but it was just such a... Man, look at this, guys. Look at this. <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. Okay, my next target for Ethereum, guys, is right up here at the 618 slash daily level. If we can 
put in uh, you know a higher high here it's actually very possible that we get a chickens drinking water rejection let's take a look here yeah guys we might actually we might actually reject from up here we'll have to see what happens let me zoom into a lower time frame i'm sorry this is so unorganized right now guys it's just i usually there's usually not such juicy price action as we are um starting up the stream like this in fact let me take some profit out of this long right now while i'm while i'm doing this here i'm gonna limit out maybe another 25 percent right here this that's that's some juicy profits guys 131 percent right now um okay right as usual guys if we can if we can get this stream up to 750 likes i will be uh giving away 0 0.025 bitcoin 0 0.025 bitcoin um yeah that's pretty crazy right guys 0 0.025 bitcoin if we can get this thing up to 750 likes um, all right, so let's talk about what happened with Ethereum in the past few days because we've had this massive pump, then we had a very significant drop, then we had another massive pump. And to long story short everything, I took a long right here, I took a scalp short right here, I took a more significant short right here, and then I took a long right here. And what I want to do in this, in this stream today is I want to talk about how I'm able to find these trade setups because... Uh, a lot of people have been messaging me saying, how do you find these trade setups? Because it seems like I always miss them. How do you find them? That's exactly what I'm going to go through today. So let's start with this one right here. This long that I took, the breakout trade. How did I know that we were going to break out of that, um, of that place right there? Man, I cannot believe this pump, though. Okay. What happened was we had dropped, we came down to a Fibonacci level of support, a Fibonacci level of support. And as we're consolidating on the support, we can see very clearly that momentum is coming up. I mean, this is just the textbook anchor trigger wave that we're looking for on Market Cipher. Where if you see something like this, while Bitcoin is trading sideways or Ethereum is trading sideways and holding a support, you can tell that momentum is ramping up. There's going to be a, a break to the upside. And when we zoom into the lower time frames, like the 12 minute here, we can also see that we are indeed, as, we, as price is consolidating here, we're even getting like bullish divergences forming. They're, they're not super clear, but we do see them, right? We do see bullish divergences forming while we're consolidating here, where price is coming lower, right here and momentum is coming higher so if you if you're seeing anchor trigger trigger on like the one hour time frame and then you are seeing bullish divergences on the lower time frames forming as we're consolidating that's how you know the breakout is going to happen because a lot of times it's very hard to tell if price is actually going to break out or not and so that was the trade i posted right here i opened the long it's riskier because it's a breakout trade um but yeah i took the long and we hit our take profits. We hit multiple take profits uh, for that long. And my final take profit was right up into the daily level at 27.10. 27.10, that was a daily level right up here. Okay. Um, and when we got to that level, a number of us in the Discord took a short scalp off of that level right up here. We took a short scalp off of that level. It was a, a, not a bad move. I mean, it wasn't the biggest move in the world. It was like 1.34%. And that scalp was actually, uh, let me see here. You know, I, I, I took some profit out of that scalp. I entered at 27.02. I got out at 2.677, a nice 19% move. And then I was holding the long the whole time, guys. Holding the long the whole time. Taking profits out of the long as, as we come, right? And then when we came back up here, to this daily level again. That's where I entered a large short position. And that, and that short was the short trade that was up about 83% in profit. Okay, that was a pretty nice short. How did we find that short? Well, keep in mind, we're coming to a level, right? We are coming to a level, a very significant level. It's a daily level of resistance. It is a 382 Fibonacci level. 
it is a 786 Fibonacci level. And if we just look here, as we're coming up to that high, we can see this is the six minute time frame. As we're making a higher high, momentum is making a lower high. Not only is momentum making a lower high, but money flow is making lower highs as we come down. Not only is money flow making lower highs, but the VWAP on market cipher B is also making lower highs as we're coming up to that level. Okay? Then when we go to a higher time frame, like the two hour time frame, check this out, guys. On the two hour time frame, we were printing a massive bearish divergence as we came from that high to this high. We also came from this high to this high. And look at this, guys. As we're coming up to our next area of resistance, it looks like we very well may be printing another massive bearish divergence where we come up here, print a higher high, and momentum prints a massively lower high with money flow coming down and the VWAP coming down, guys. So, you know, be on the lookout for putting on your cargo shorts here, y'all. Be on the lookout for the cargo shorts as we come up to these levels, right? And it's always a good rule of thumb to never enter a trade unless we come to a level or if we lose an important level. Like last night, you know, as we lost the daily, that's when I put out the signal in my Discord. Because at first I started that thing out as a scalp trade, right? I started it out as a scalp trade. But there was a trade that I actually had in my Discord from Monday night where I was literally looking to short, to take a short. Let me open this up in a new tab so we can see. I was looking to short 2710 ish if we, on the higher time frames, were printing bearish divergences. Okay? This is something I posted. I went through it in my VIP TA live stream on Monday morning. I posted this Monday afternoon looking to take a short from that daily level if we get the bearish divergences. So then when we were getting the bearish divergences uh, last night, I posted the short entries looking nice. I'm short here. I had already been short here as a scalp, but once I saw that we lost the daily level, I said, yeah, let's take this as more of a swing trade. We hit two take profits on this, guys. We hit take profit one, and um, then we hit take profit two. And after take profit two, I was up, you know, about 83% right there. And then what happened, guys, is this. This morning, when I was looking at the charts, the first thing I noticed is I missed a pump. I actually, I missed a pump this morning. Uh, let's, let's find where I missed it. Right here, right? We pumped up. We, we got this pump because we had a hidden bullish divergence, which is still playing out in my mind, right? We had some hidden bullish divergences forming on the charts here where, where um, price was coming, price was getting higher and momentum was getting lower on the one hour time frame. That is called a hidden bullish divergence. I missed that pump, but I said I'm keeping an eye out for a regular bullish divergence for a nice bounce as we come down into the golden pocket. So this morning I said, I want to see price come down into the golden pocket and I want to see momentum on the lower time frames form a higher low. I want to see price form a lower low and momentum form a higher low. And, uh, and I, you know, I was basically, you know, that's, ex that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. I posted some new levels here for people who are in the Discord. These are my new ETH levels. You can download them and import them. And yeah, that's exactly what we got, right? We got the bullish divergence and the chicken started to drink water. <laughs> the chicken started to drink water right there, guys. It was, it was an epic, epic Ethereum uh, long right there. It was an epic Ethereum long. Um, look at this bounce, guys. Look at the chickens drinking water. This is a chicken drinking wick right here. And that trade is currently up about 130%. I am leveraged, obviously, all, but I mean, you know, it's that that was a 9.6% move in a matter of two hours. Um, simply because this this is why it's so important to have a plan, right? This morning when I woke up, I noticed I missed a pretty nice bounce. I had one guy in the Discord say he made more money on his way to work longing this bounce than he will at work. I hope that he got a chance to get this long. But, um, yeah, so I had, I had a plan, right? I came to the charts, and I noticed, hey, there's really no trade for me to take right now, but what would be a nice trade? If I could have a nice trade, what would that trade be? And this was the trade, right? I was already short. By the way, the short is stopped out now, guys. The short got stopped out in profit. 
I was already short. I'm looking for scalps while I'm shorting. I didn't know this move was going to be so intense, but it was. And I'm like, yeah, if we, if we form bullish divergences coming down to that golden pocket, that is the long I will take. And that was my plan. Then you just sit on the sidelines and you, you wait. You wait for uh, price to, to do what you want it to do, y'all. You wait for price to do what you want it to do. And now that I am uh, cooled off, okay, I think I can put back on my Jason. put back on my shirt right got to keep it somewhat uh family friendly in here but i was drenched in sweat when i first sat down here i was doing farmer's runs guys i i, I did a workout today it was an intense workout i did squats barbell back squats low bar i did trap bar deadlifts i did bench presses bent rows and then i did overhead press and i did weighted chin-ups and then i finished it off by going outside and doing farmer runs with the trap bar and I run up and down my driveway with like 185 pounds on it and in between I'm doing push-ups and all this crazy workout guys you want to stay in shape you should do farmer runs but uh so I was like dri dripping in sweat and while I'm doing all this I'm trading on my phone you know the chickens are drinking water I'm working out I'm listening to music I'm on discord man life is just nuts sometimes life is nuts sometimes guys but um yeah so let me uh, let me make this smaller here and um yeah, so it's very possible too, guys. You know, the thing is this. Like, we had this wick high right here, right? Can't forget about this. Uh, it's very possible that we could uh, get the rejection off of this wick, the swing failure pattern, chickens drinking water, and come right back down, right? A wise trader once said, fast move, false move, right? Uh, trader's reality says that a lot. Been trying to, I've been trying to watch trader's reality more, guys. I'm trying to learn that stuff. It, it's intense for me, to be honest with you guys. It's intense for me. So it's possible, guys, if we come to the lower time frames, you know, let's see what happens. I, I would like to see bearish divs. Do we see bearish divs? We do see some bearish divs, guys. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm going to enter a little short here. I'm going to enter a short. I'm going to enter a short. I'm hedged in with my long. I'm going to enter a short here, guys, because of the bearish divergences on the one minute. What the heck? I'm pumped up, guys, on adrenaline. Don't follow me. Don't copy me. That was an intense pump. That was an intense pump. We've got bearish divergences. You know, if we if we can lose this level here, that would that would be that would be nicer. But so let's do it. Okay. Whew. You know, momentum's coming up, but money uh, momentum's coming down. Money flow's coming up. The three minute, there's really no bearish divs, guys. This is not the strongest looking short entry. I'll tell you, it's not at all. Don't follow me. Don't follow me, guys. This is stupid, actually. What the heck am I doing? This is why you shouldn't, you shouldn't work out and trade at the same time. But does that wick not look bearish to you? But this breakout here, this volume looks convincing. And we're about to get a money flow crossover in the 12-minute, guys. Don't, don't follow me into this thing. Don't follow me in. All right. Um, let's let's do some technical analysis here, guys. Let's do some technical analysis. Let's talk about where I think Bitcoin and Ethereum and all this can go. Let's talk about where I think Bitcoin and all this can go. Um, all right. This is Bitcoin, guys. Bitcoin, once again, this morning, my analysis was this. I circled some wicks on the chart, and I said the chickens can drink if price dips below the wicks. I had these wicks circled right here on the chart. Let's, uh, let's, let's go to the, to the chart here. Posted this in my Discord. said, look, guys, if we come down below this 786 and we come down below these wicks here, I think the chickens could drink water. We come to the Bitcoin chart. What happens here? We come down below both of the wicks. right right to here and what happens the chickens drink water the chickens drink water guys that uh, is exactly what happened 
as uh, we came down here. We got this nice chicken drinking water bounce. And if anybody's unfamiliar with what chickens drinking water is, chickens drinking water is if Bitcoin or Ethereum or any asset, if we have a wick, either a high or a low wick, and there's liquidity that can be grabbed down here, what happens a lot of times is price will be pushed down to that level. The liquidity is grabbed to fill large buy orders and then the price pumps up from there. Okay. Um, and I call that chickens drinking water because the way the price pumps up with the wick coming up so quick looks like a chicken drinking water. If we go to youtube.com and we take a look and we just search for chickens drinking water, we can see what they look like when they drink water. It's just like the wick. The wick, if you clean your ears, guys, you need to know something important. If you, if you shove those things in your ears, you are going to get an ear infection. Look at this wax. Your ears were not meant for this, guys. And honestly, I'm a white guy and I'm pretty nerdy and I know the better way to clean ears. My hearing is so good, guys, I can hear what you're saying right now. All I do is I shove a pen in my ear. I shove this sharp piece of metal in my ear. So the, the chickens, the chickens, look at how they drink, guys. It's just like the wicks. The wick dips its head down and then, boom, the wick pulls its head back up and laps up the water real quick, just like how chickens drink. Look at how the chicken puts his head down, okay? Watch it. Boom, dips down below the wick. The water level is the wick. The chicken dips his head down, get, grabs that liquid water, right? Grabs the liquidity then, then watch the head of the chicken. Boom, okay, pulls it right back up and now it's gonna lap up the water with its beak. Let's watch the chicken lap up the water with the beak. Mm. All right, look, look, dip down, grab the liquidity. Mm. Okay, that's, that's exactly what we're looking for. And that's exactly what happened with the Bitcoin as well this morning. And that is also something I posted in the Discord this morning, guys. And by the way, if anybody wants to get into the Discord, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper. And um, yes, you can link the Discord through the Patreon. Also, guys, we still do. If you, if you want to learn this stuff, if you want to learn technical analysis, how to get these levels, how to use a FIB, how to use volume, uh, how to use Market Cipher, check out jasoncaspertrading.com because we do have a deal going on right now, $80 off the course, link in the description. The goal of this course is to equip you with the skills that you need to become a confident and profitable trader. And although this is not financial advice, I'm simply just an entertainer on YouTube, guys. Remember, guys, remember, this is not financial advice. Remember who you're listening to, all right? This ain't no financial advice, y'all. All right, you see my teeth all crooked and stuff? It's because I'm a redneck out here and I don't know nothing, all right? Now, this isn't financial advice. Nothing's guaranteed, but this course will give you the knowledge and the skills you need to actually start approaching these markets in a logical, methodical way so that you can have a strategy that's been tested, you can know how to get the levels, you can know what to look for, and you can have risk management so that even if you're losing, let's say even 7 out of 10 trades, you can still, through implementing good risk management, you can still be profitable over time. I'm going to drop a link in the description for the discount. And also, guys, one more thing. Um, let's get this thing up to, let's get this thing up to 750 likes so I can do a Bitcoin giveaway. If everyone calls their mom and uh, tells their mom to like the video, we could absolutely get this. Uh, we could get this thing up. I, I do like doing the Bitcoin giveaways, guys. Also, Market Cipher. I have Market Cipher. I have Bybit, right? Bybit affiliate links while I'm showing my affiliate links. Same old stuff every other YouTuber gives you from Bybit, right? The same old thing Carl from the Moon gives you and everyone else. I got that too. And uh, Market Cipher. I don't have a discount, but I do have an affiliate link. If you want to get Market Cipher and support me, you can do that. But um, yes. I love Market Cipher. Okay, so talked about the trades I've been doing with Ethereum, talking about the Bitcoin. Currently, guys, I did not enter the chickens drinking water long for Bitcoin. I did not. I totally missed it. When I'm working out in the gym, guys, and I'm on my phone trading, I can only have one chart open at a time on TradingView. I can't easily switch back and forth. I have to like go to the options, click like load chart, 
and load my Ethereum, load my Bitcoin chart. So I was only looking at Ethereum, but that's okay because I'm currently am long and short on Bitcoin. I'm short from here and I'm long from down here. So I'm hedged nicely and regardless of what happens to the corn, I am, I've locked in wins and I'm going to be making money. So my focus has been on Ethereum lately. So let's talk about Ethereum. What do I think is going to happen here? Well, all right, let me, let me turn off some of these, some of these key levels that I've got going on on the chart here. Um, yeah, let's turn them off. Actually, let's keep them on here. See, I'm all over the place this morning, guys. I am all over the place this morning simply because I, uh, I'm, I'm hyped, guys. I am so hyped right now. I'm hyped. I had caffeine. I had all this stuff happen to me in the morning. Trades, deadlifts, right? I'm shaking. I'm literally, I've got the shakes, guys. I need, I need to take a break from the caffeine. I'm serious with you, okay? I'm starting to look like Muhammad Ali. No offense to Muhammad Ali. Okay. So, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Let's talk about what happened to Ethereum here. Okay, so obviously we had this massive move to the upside since we came to the bottom of a descending triangle and broke out of it. So if we turn on our trend lines that we got going on here, okay, we, and we go to like a daily level, daily time frame, we can see that we broke out of this um, symmetrical triangle right here. Now, what is about to happen next? I think we have a very important level for Ethereum coming up to us, and that is this, guys. We have these wicks right up here. Notice this. Boom. Right around $2,961. We have these wicks, okay? We have these highs up here that could very well give us chicken drinking water entries, right? Keep these wicks on your mind. Not only that, we have a daily level right here at uh, 28.82, and we also have a daily level right down here, boom, at 28.55, right? So, we need to keep in the back of our minds the fact that we very well could have the chickens come out to get thirsty here and drink at some of these higher levels, right? If we keep pumping up, we could very well reject off of, you know, this wick right up here at around 3K, we could reject off of these wicks. These are things we need to keep in the back of our minds. We need to be looking at Market Cipher to see if we get bearish divergences while price is pumping up to these levels. Notice the daily Market Cipher B right here. We're getting what looks like, it looks like we're playing a game of red dot, green dot, right, y'all? It really does look like we are playing a game of red dot, green dot, where, you know, we were printing a top on Market Cipher B on the daily. But then all of a sudden, Mark Cypher B is like, nah, psych, y'all. I'm going to print a green dot. Not only am I going to print a green dot, but, you know, look at this, guys. The money flow is literally about to cross over on the daily time frame for Ethereum. That could give us a massive pump. I really think if we get the money flow crossover on Ethereum, you know, we could come up above this, th these important areas of resistance. Now, these are very important areas of resistance because... Look at how we have this kind of throwover thing going on right here, where we have the zone of resistance up here, these white lines. We get this massive pump, this massive dump, and then these white lines here are acting as the high of the range that Ethereum has been trading in since we lost that thing going all the way back to May 19th, right? It's acting as the high of the range. Right now, we are coming up to the very high of this Ethereum range, right? This was a descending triangle. We broke out of the descending triangle. And now we can just look at this as a horizontal trading range where we have our highs up here at around 3,000 and our lows down here at around 1707. Okay? And so as we're coming up to these levels, we need to be conscious of the fact that there are some important wicks here, some areas of liquidity. I mean, there are probably a lot of people who potentially have, you know, um, entered a long position here to try and catch a bounce and are still in their positions if they're low leveraged enough, waiting for us to come back up here so they can close the break even. There's probably, you know, there, there's a lot of reasons why we might reject off of here, right? People closing uh, longs that, they're, that they've been in since here. Um, people trying to grab the, li the liquidity to fill large sell orders from up in this area. And we have to be conscious of those things. 
So, um, you know, the main areas I'm really looking at right now are if we keep pumping, right? If we play a game in red dot, green dot, is uh, 2855. Whoa. Somebody just tried to, tried to call me. Scared me because my headphones are in. 2855, 2882, and 2961. You know, those are areas where, you know, we should, we should be looking for the bearish divergences to form as we are coming up to those areas. And uh, right now we're printing another, another uh, green dot on market cipher on the four hour for Ethereum. So it's looking like we very well may get another pump up here, guys. Okay. Depending on what happens, we very well may get another pump up there. Uh, let's check out the two hour now. The two hour, we're getting the green dot. But here's the thing, guys. As we're getting the green dot, check it out, right? Check it out. What what is happening? We are printing the bearish divergences. As unless this momentum wave on the two hour pumps all the way up here, then we are going to reject off of one of those levels because the momentum cannot sustain that price action, and there needs to be a correction. Also, look at the money flow on the two aura, right? Practicing my espanol on the dos aura time frame, right? We've got uh, the money flow coming down. We come to the one hour, right? Money flow curving into the red, right? Look at the money flow coming down. Uh, even still, you know, even though we have the hidden bullish divergence here, which is probably, you know, I would say that this is why we're, we're getting the pumps here, the hidden bullish divergence that has played out to get this massive, massive pump, guys, this massive pump, um, you know, at the end of the day also. If we get a, a, a momentum wave like that just comes over and humps down like this, and that is the most massive, ugliest, bearish divergence you've ever done seen in your life, right? So what we need to do is we need to just keep our eyes on the levels. And if we keep pumping, you know, those are the levels I'm primarily looking at, plus a few others that I posted in my Discord, right? These are the levels I'm primarily looking at to get some kind of nice chicken drinking water reaction from. And then below us, what do we got going on below us as supports? Right? If we start to dump right from here, what supports are we looking at? Right? It's all about finding resistances and supports. What supports and resistances are we looking at? Right? So those are, those are the, the shorts I'm looking from those resistances. And then you know, I'll be looking for longs from supports. So the thing I like to do, y'all, and y'all know this. Y'all know me. I like to pull out the fib. I like to pull out the fib from the swing low to the swing high. Let's assume this is the rejection here, guys, right? We are going to have to do this to wherever Bitcoin, I'm sorry, I'm so used to exclusively trading the corn. I'm used to exclusively trading the corn, guys, but you know, this, this is now the Ethereum, right? This is now Ethereum. So wherever Ethereum pumps to, that's where we're going to have to pull our FIB to, right? So it, let's say we do pump up to this high. We're going to have to pull our FIB up to that high, put it right there. And then we will be looking for where's price going to come down to. We got the 382. We got the golden ratio and the 786. These are my three favorite Fibonacci levels. Again, guys, if you want to learn how to use Fib, how to find these levels, check out jasoncaspertrading.com. Again, we do have an $80 discount in the description. Basically, we go through everything you need to know to trade the way I trade. Obviously, everyone has their own style, um, but this is the way I trade. And it's a good foundation. If you're totally new, this is everything I wish I knew before I started trading. A great foundation from which you can build upon because we go through everything in order so that you're not learning a tidbit here and then a tidbit there and then you realize you have to go back and learn this that you didn't learn. This will give you everything in order. We're going to be pulling our fib and, you know, we'll be looking for, depending on where we come down to, again, remember, this is an imaginary hypothetical fib up to this high right here, but we'll be looking for Ethereum, Ethereum to come back down to these levels, right? The 382, the 618. The 786, that's what we're going to be looking for, guys. That's what we are going to be looking for. And, um, yeah, that's primarily how I'm going to be doing it. I'm also going to be looking at volume, analyzing volume. I'm also going to be um, just looking at daily levels of support and resistance. And I have my important key levels of confluence on my chart right here. Uh, you know, those are in the Discord, too. If you're in the Discord, you can import those directly into your trading view. And uh, then I just set alerts for when we get there. And man, guys, this Ethereum pump is absolutely insane right now. I can't believe it. I was not expecting. I was expecting to stay in my short. I was expecting to stay in my short. But um, 
This is crazy, guys. This is so crazy. This What I thought was going to be a tiny little scalp is up 157% right now. So, and that that's, brings up another good point, guys. You know, a lot of people, they, they say, Jay, you know what? You take profit too early, man. You leave too much on the table. You take profit too early. Taking profit early, guys, is one of the ways I am able to actually be profitable doing this to ensure that every trade I take, every trade I take, right? I have more money in my account after the trade than when I started because let's say you take a scalp and you don't lock in profit early and then you take a loss as opposed to taking a scalp and it's just a 1% move. You lock in some profit, you exit the trade with this minuscule gain, right? Great, you have more money than when you started, as opposed to a loss. But eventually what's going to happen, guys, is you're going to get small wins, break-evens, small losses, taking profit early, but then you're going to get a trade like this, guys. Then you're going to get a trade like this. Wait a second, sorry, that's not, that's not the real trade I took. <laughs> you're going to get a trade like the one I took this morning, which was from down here. And I'm not trying to pull a fib. But it was from about here. And you're going to get a 10% move. A 10% move. And even if I took 50% of the trade out, which I did. I took 50% of the trade out when I was up 39% in profit. I still have made a lot more money than that original take profit just because it's pumped so much. Right? Just because it's pumped so much. And that's how I, I ensure that I'm locking in my profits, guys. And it works really well. It works really well. Um, man, it's up 170% right now. I'm going to take a little bit more profit, just another 10% out, guys, because I'm, I'm trading here. Okay, yeah, locking that in. There's some juicy profits. I just closed that stupid short I entered, so I just took enough profit out of my long to undo that stupid short. What? <laughs> Don't, don't trade and lift, guys. Trading and lifting can be dangerous, okay? Trading and lifting can be dangerous. You'll make the good gains this way, but you might not make the best gains the other way, okay? All right, so these are the levels I'm looking for a rejection off of Ethereum. Let's, let's go over to the corn, guys. The corn right now is coming up to a level of resistance right here, okay? We can see that we are coming up to a golden pocket area of resistance, an important area of resistance because... This was actually an important support right here that got flipped into resistance. And look at that, guys. Look at how well the levels are respected. Right? We wick right up to it and get a nice little rejection right there. Uh, this is the one-hour time frame. Man. This is some juicy price action, is it not, guys? So, really, yeah, for, for Bitcoin, you know... We had this, uh, this, this, this is a little range that you could say we've been trading in with a low down here put in by this low right here at about 36.4 and then the high put in right up here at, at about 42.5-ish. And so all I did was analyzing the volume in this little range here and you can see that we have some very important levels marked out. We have the value area low which finds confluence with this 786 Fibonacci level. We've got the value area high, which finds confluence with this 382 Fibonacci level. And then we've got the point of control right here, which last night we uh, did get a pretty sweet rejection off of. And so, you know, if we're coming back up, we came right down. Look at this. We came from the value area high. We came into the value area high. We rejected off of it. We came down to the value area low, bounced off of it to the point of control, rejected off of it to the value area low, bounced off of it. So obviously now the next place we look for a reaction would be this point of control. Also, if we want to pull out a local fib, let me turn off some of these fibs here and put on a, a local fib, right? We'll put on a local fib. Um, boom. Boom. And take the fib from this swing high that we got here at the POC down to here. We can see that we're coming up to a golden pocket uh, the local golden pocket resistance coming in at about good old 38, 929 and zero cents. And so that this would be an area and the 786 would be areas where 
if this is the beginning or you know if this is truly a downtrend where we're putting in our high our low our lower high our lower low put in a lower high and a lower low you know i'd be looking for the retracement to come to one of these areas okay um, and how will we know that we're getting a rejection we're going to be looking for bearish divergences on the lower time frames maybe the 12 minute you know if we come and we get a red wave right here come down and then we get another red wave like this as price is coming into either the golden pocket or the 786 you know that's that's the sign that's the signal and again guys this is not financial advice this is just entertainment purposes only guys this is entertainment purposes only you know you guys know that right you guys know that this is for entertainment purposes only i am not a financial advisor in fact i'm just a redneck hillbilly powerlifting farming bible thumping god fearing gun toting upside down glasses having crooked teeth kind of guy all right so i'm just here to entertain y'all okay i ain't here to give you no financial advice you're in my discord this ain't no financial advice all right just cuz the analysis a lot of times is correct don't mean it's financial advice y'all right don't mean that let's get into the chat here shout out to h shout out to super googly pulling the fib bro we got almost 500 people in here let's uh let's get this thing up to at least 500 likes you know, I, I do want to get it up to 750 likes so we can do the Bitcoin giveaway. Um, shout out to Spencer who says the Jason Casper course is essential if you want to trade confidently and deadlift 500 pounds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, shout out to Macro who says my strategy is perfect. He tried it three times and it worked every time. Uh, is Bitcoin doing a head and shoulders pattern? Well, let's check it out. Let's check out the corn, guys. Is the corn giving us a head and shoulders? Um, you know, it could be, right? If this is our neckline right here, kabam, and we look at this as a, um, a shoulder, a head, and now a shoulder, yeah, that could be a head and shoulders pattern, guys. It absolutely could be. Absolutely. And keep in mind, you know, the volatility as day traders, right, as the kind of folk who, um, as the kind of folk who trade, you know, scalping and, you know, uh, I don't even know what's, what's the word, guys? We're, 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 we're trying to catch volatility on lower time frames, right? I'm trying to catch volatility on lower time frames. And so we lose sight of the big picture, right? We're scalping, we're shorting and longing. It feels like price is going all crazy up and down. If we just take some time and we zoom out, right, what's the reality of the situation? The reality of the situation is, you know, we're trading in a range. We're trading in a sideways range, right? And the other reality of the situation is this. We rejected off the high of the range, guys. And so just objectively, techn technically speaking, right, if we're trading in a range from the low to the high to the low to the high, it makes sense we come back down to the low. And also, if this is a real rejection up here, guys, this is extremely bearish. Why? Because we took out the previous highs. <laughs> we got a massive rejection. You know, if, if we can't hold the, these areas of, 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 of support right here, I do believe we will see the corn coming back down into the 20s. Specifically, like, um, either 27.7 is an area I'm looking for, for a nice long or lower. You know, 26 you know, y'all can see I have an alert here, 27.7, because we have a wick down here from January, right? So, yeah, but who knows? I don't know what's going to happen, guys. I don't know. Market Cypher is giving me mixed signals right here, right? It looks like Market Cypher could be giving us a game of red dot, green dot in the daily time frame, too. Um. And we are holding, and this is also very important, but we're holding above the value area high. You know, if we pull out a fixed range in this, in this range, uh, let's pull out some volume, right? If we pull out a fixed range here, we can see that the, the Bitcoin is not able to come back into the value area and hold below this value area high up here of like 38.3-ish. Every time we come down to this area, we, we are holding it as support. 
So that's a bullish side to me that we're not coming back down into the value area. Okay, it's very possible now that Bitcoin is just going to start ranging in a different range using the previous value area high as the new value area low. And, and you know, if, if you are watching what I'm watching, if you're in the Discord, you know, we are analyzing the volume in this little chunk right here to say, okay, now what? Are we holding in a new range up here? Because it's possible. It's very possible. And so far, it's been respected well. So really, because I'm not, you know, I can't tell the future. Only the Lord knows the future. All I can do is come up with a plan and say, if price does this, then I'm going to do that. Or if price does that, then I'm going to do this. If you all know what I'm saying. If you all know what I'm saying. Right? So let's pop back into the chat here. Shout out to Super Googler. Shout out to First Coast Crypto. Shout out to Robert Bonar. Uh, Layoth Salah asks, should I sell my ETH? Why would you sell your ETH? I don't know. Why would you do that? Hey, shout out to Super Kitty in the chat. Shout out to Super Kitty. Check out Super Kitty on Discord. Check out Super Kitty on TradingView for some quality technical analysis. Seriously, quality TA. Uh, I respect her very much as a trader. She is an excellent trader. Um, thanks for being here, Super Kitty. She's been long on ETH and Bitcoin for the last few days. So that's good to know. Uh, Ryan Bosley says, uh, swing failure pattern on ETH, you might be able to short soon. Yep, that's what I've been waiting for, my friend. Uh, let's see here. People people need to quit calling me. Yeah, see, these 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 wicks up here, these wicks are places where I, I am looking for a swing failure. Um, you know, obviously we have this wick right here, but I, I don't know, like we're, we're momentum strong. But look, look, at the bear, look at the bearish divergence is forming, though. They are forming, right? Money flow is coming down on the four hour. That ain't no joke. That ain't no joke, y'all. Um, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. True, true. Shout out to George. Thanks for being here, George. Shout out to uh, Callie Crop Doc, who's also a farmer. <laughs> Jason is the Chad of crypto. Guys, no, I'm actually an incel. I'm actually an incel. I hate Chad. I hate Chad, man. You know? getting all the girls. The girls don't ever want to talk to me, guys. You know, they don't. I feel like, you know what I feel like? I'll tell you what I feel like. I feel like Bitcoin, as it comes up to this resistance, right? This resistance is every female, okay, in the world. And I am the Bitcoin price action. And I struggle with my confidence, guys. I struggle with my confidence, right? I struggle with it. And so I, 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 it takes me a long time to gather up the courage to even come up to ask the girl out, right? And, you know, because the last time I tried to ask a girl out was at 65K. It was at 65K. This is, this is the last time I had the courage to even talk to a female. Because usually, guys, I mean, you can tell, I live in the basement, right? I live in the basement, right? I'm just a nerd, neck beard guy in the basement, you know, on my computer all day. In Discord, you know, that's, that's how I roll. And so finally, I, you know, I, I, I saw a, a woman. I said, you know what? I am going to talk to this woman. And I, I went up to her and, and she rejected me hard. Hard she rejected me with a massive bearish divergence. The money flow was coming down. In fact, as I walked up to her, she was already pulling her money flow down. And her momentum waves were, were sagging as well, okay? Her momentum waves were sagging as I was coming up to her. She rejected me. And the, the last time I tried was up here at about 42.6K. That's the last time I tried. And uh, we can see, if we go to the potential Bitcoin trade setups here, that, um, that she rejected me. She rejected me very intensely right here at uh, 42.6K. And shout out to Tina, the best moderator ever. And shout out to Big Butts 28 the best wife ever. I love you, Big Butts 28. Thanks for being my wife. Thanks for not rejecting me, Big Butts 28. Thanks for not pulling your momentum waves down as I came up to talk to you. Let's see here.
What's up, Hunter Kerr Fitness for Life? <laughs> oh man. Sorry guys, we're we're waxing nonsensical. Okay, so the, the 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 outline for the stream is first we wax biblical, then we wax technical analytical, and then we wax nonsensical. <laughs> that those are the order of operations on the Jason Casper channel, all right? We keep it real up in here. Um Is it a good time to short ETH? I cannot tell you that. You know, I just shorted and I, 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 I got stopped out of it. Okay. Or I closed it manually because I, I tried to short here. Uh, we're getting another green dot in the four hour. Honestly, here's my honest opinion on it. I would like to short higher. I would, I would like to short higher. I'm long right now. Um, I would like to wait for higher or a clear bullish, I'm sorry, a clear bearish Divinacci on like the six minute or even the 12 minute, right? If, if we can get a nice bearish div on the 12 minute, or even better, the 24 minute, as we're coming up to these Elysians levels, that's where I would I would look to short. That's just me, guys. Uh, Daily Dose of Crypto. Jay's a no cardio guy. Uh, I love cardio. You know, I was just saying, guys, I was doing farmer runs before I started the stream. That's why I had no shirt on when I started the stream. I was outside in the sun. The sweat is dripping down. And, you know, I've got 200 pounds on the trap bar. And I'm literally running up and down my, my driveway hill. That is cardio, guys. That's, that, is, that is chicken drinking water kind of cardio. 90 minute looks bullish. We had a 24 minute bearish div on Ethereum. Uh, let's check it out, guys. Ethereum, 24 minute. Yeah, we've got the bearish divs forming. That is correct. The bearish divs are forming. But I want to see them. I want to see them across multiple time frames. I want to see that come across on the 12 minute, the six minute, because this momentum wave could still come up higher, right? And I don't like. This is clearly not a swing failure right here because we're not. The chickens aren't thirsty, guys. The, you know, you can lead a chicken to water, but you cannot make it drink. I have learned this firsthand, guys. When I'm out with the chickens, if they're not thirsty, they're not going to drink. In fact, I, I posted a video on my channel not too long ago. If we go to uh, this website, ew, what the heck? Is that creepazoid? All right, go to youtube.com. Go to the Jason Casper YouTube channel here. <laughs> what the heck? What? <laughs> what the heck, guys? Okay, <laughs> go to the Jason Casper. And um, let's see here. Go to... Uh, Where's that video? Where's that? Right here. The chicken's drinking. You know, if the chickens are hungry, they're going to drink. That's one thing. Okay. But you can't enter along unless they're thirsty. And you have to be patient. They might not drink right away. See, look at that. You can lead them to water, but they might not drink. But eventually. Eventually. Right. But eventually they will. Eventually, those chickens will get thirsty. And right now, I'm just not confident that they're too thirsty right now. If we start to lose this level with uh, conviction and the bearish divergence is confirming, that's another story, guys. That's another story. Let's get back into the stream here. William Barwell wants to know, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, how tall am I? I'm 6'2". What is the, uh, the red dot, green dot game? Red dot, green dot is, um, where basically we print a red dot and then a green dot. You guys know uh, uh, when you're a kid, you know, they say red dot. Oh, green dot. You run, 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 run. Red dot. Green dot. Ooh, red dot. Green dot. That's kind of what we're playing, right? Because on the daily time frame, we get a red dot. Or on any time frame, really. We get the red dot and everyone stops. Everyone's like, up, oh, super bearish. Out, we're rejecting. Then, boom, green dot. Everyone starts running again. Super bullish. Off to the horse races. That's red dot, green dot. And it works best in conjunction with a money flow crossover on the market cipher bizzle. Okay. When we go to the four hour time frame for the corn, we can see a great example of this game, red dot, green dot, right here. Where we print the red dot and then we get the green dot. Guys, I appreciate all of you for being here. May the Lord bless all of you. I just realized I got to go. I just realized I got to go. I got to go, y'all. Um, but um, receive this blessing 
in the Hebrew language. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'chunecha. Yisa Adonai panav elecha. V'yesem lecha shalom b'shem Yeshua HaMashiach Elohei Israel, which in English means may the Lord bless you, may the Lord protect you, may the Lord shine His light upon you, may the Lord have grace upon you, may the Lord lift up His face toward you and give you wholeness and completeness in the name of Jesus, the Messiah, the God of Israel. Amen. I do pray that all of you are blessed. I'm sorry for the abrupt ending, but I've got some responsibilities. That's what happens when you grow up. I'll be 31 on Sunday. Sheesh, I'm so old. All right, peace, guys.